Chapter 75 The Resurrection In the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful, I swear by the Day of Resurrection, and I swear by the self-reproaching soul. Does man think that we shall not assemble his bones? Surely we are able to put together in perfect order the very tips of his fingers. No, man desires to continue committing sins. He asks, when will be this day of resurrection? So, when the sight shall be dazed, and the moon will be eclipsed, and the sun and moon will be joined together, on that day man will say, Where is the refuge to flee to? No, there is no refuge. To your Lord will be the place of rest that day. On that day man will be informed of what he sent forward and what he left behind. No, man will be a witness against himself. Though he may put forth his excuses, do not move your tongue concerning the Quran, O Muhammad, to make haste with it. It is for us to collect it and to give you the ability to recite it. And when we have recited it to you, then follow its recital. Then it is for us to make it clear to you. No, but you love the present life of this world and neglect the hereafter. Some faces that day shall be shining and radiant, looking to their Lord, and some faces that day will be dark and frowning, thinking that some calamity was about to fall on them. No, when the soul reaches the collarbone, and it will be said, Who can cure him and save him from death? And he will conclude that it was the time of departing, and one leg will be joined with another. On that day the summoning will be to your Lord. So he neither believed nor prayed, but on the contrary, he rejected the truth and turned away, and then he walked full of pride to his family with conceit. Woe to you! Again, woe to you! Again, woe to you! And then again, woe to you! Does man think that he will be left aimless? Was he not a tiny drop which gushed forth? Then he became a clot, then Allah shaped and fashioned him in due proportion and made him in two sexes, male and female. Is he then unable to give life to the I'm just going to read the final sermon, the final khutbah of the Prophet Muhammad Some people have a misconception, they think uh, would Muslims do not have to invite the disbelievers to Islam. So I'm just going to read the khutbah, uh, the final sermon of Prophet Muhammad so Please uh, watch the entire video, it's a very good one. Okay, the last sermon khutbah of Prophet Muhammad farewell sermon. Prophet Muhammad delivered his uh, last sermon khutbah on the 9th of uh, Duhul uh, Hijrah, I mean sorry, uh, Hijjah. 12th uh, and last month of the Islamic year, 10 years after Hijrah, migration from Mecca to Medina, in the Urana Valley of Mount Arafat, his words were quite clear and conscious and were directed to the entire humanity. This sermon was delivered on the 9th day of Duhul Hijjah, 10th A.H., in the Urana Valley of Mount Arafat in Mecca. After praising and thanking Allah, he said, O people, lend me an attractive, I'm sorry, O people, lend me an attentive ear, for I know not whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you again. Therefore, listen to what I am saying to you very carefully, and take these words to those who could not be present here today. Okay? He said, take these words to those who could not be present here today. O people, just as <clears throat> you regard this month, this day, this city as sacred, so regard the life and property of every Muslim as a sacred trust. Return the goods entrusted to you to their rightful owners. Hurt no one so that no one may hurt you. Remember that you 
will indeed meet your Lord and that he will indeed recount re your deeds. And Allah has forbidden you to take usury interest, therefore all interest uh, obligation uh, uh, sorry, therefore all interest obligation shall henceforth be waived. Your capital, however, is yours to give. It's yours to keep. You will neither inflict nor suffer any inequality. Allah has judged that there shall be no interest and that all the interest due to Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, Prophet's uncle, shall henceforth be waived. Beware of Shaitan. For the safety of your religion, he has lost all hope that he will ever be able to lead you astray in big things. So beware of following him in small things. O oh people, it is true that you have certain rights with regard to your woman, but they also have rights over you. Remember that. You have taken them as your wives only under Allah's trust and with His permission. If they abide by your right, then to them belongs the right to be fed and clothed in kindness. Do treat your woman well and be kind to them, for they are your partners and committed helpers. And it is your right that they do not make friends with anyone of whom you do not approve, as well as never to be unchaste. O people, listen to me in earnest. Worship Allah, say your fi five daily prayers, Salah, fast during the month, the month of Ramadan, and give your wealth in zakat. Perform Hajj if you can afford to. All mankind is from Adam and Eve. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab, nor a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. Also a white has no superiority over a black, nor a black has any superiority over a white, except by pity and good action. Learn what every Muslim is a brother to every Muslim and that the Muslims constitute one brotherhood. Nothing shall be legitimate to a Muslim which belongs to a fellow Muslim unless it was given freely and willingly. Do not therefore do injustice to yourselves. Remember one day you will appear before Allah and answer your deeds. So be aware, beware, do not Stray from the path of righteousness after I am gone. O people, no prophet or apostle will come after me, and no new faith will be born. Reason well, therefore, O people, understand the words which I convey to you. I leave behind me two things, the Quran and my example, the Sunnah, and if you follow these, you will never go astray. All those who listen to me shall pass on my words to others and those to others again. And the last one, and may the last ones understand my words better than those who listen to me directly. Be my witness, O Allah, that I have conveyed your message to your people. See, even in the last part, Prophet said, you know, all those who listen to me shall pass on my words to others and those to others again. And may the last ones understand my words better than those who listen to me directly. Be my witness, O Allah, that I have conveyed your message to your people. This is referring to you know, Muslims, you know, to tell other Muslims and also non Muslims, you know, what Islam is, you know. We have to. You know, follow the commands of our Prophet. We have to continue delivering the message of Islam to both Muslims and non-Muslims. You know, the reference uh, see Al Bukhari Hadith uh, 1623, 1626, 
63-61 Sahih of Imam Muslim also refers to the sermon in Hadith number 98 Imam Al-Tirmidhi has mentioned this sermon in Hadith numbers uh, 16-28 2046, 2085. Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal has given us the longest and perhaps the most uh, complete version of this sermon in his uh, Masnud Hadith number 19774. So all I'm saying, brothers and sisters, you know, Islam is uh, a religion for whole of humanity. So we have to do Islam and tell the Muslims about practicing Islam. But as well as we also have to tell the disbelievers about Islam and do dawah to them, invite them to Islam. So Islam is inviting non muslims telling Muslims to how to practice Islam properly and do the right things. And dawah is to invite the disbelievers to Islam. You know, all the prophets of Islam has done it and Prophet Muhammad has commanded us, you know, like to pass on the words to others who are not who are not present, you know. And you know, he also said there will be no other prophets after coming him. So this is uh, like a you know, command of the Prophet of Islam, Prophet my last Prophet. You know, he told us to convey the message to others. You know, and like I was reading in the beginning, even in the beginning, he said, you know, uh, O people, lend me an attentive ear, for I know not whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you again. Therefore listen to what I am saying to you very carefully and take those words to those who could not be present here today. So what is he saying? He's, and after those what happened? After Prophet Master said that, you know, the Sahabas they went to, to, to uh, they traveled the whole world, you know. They tried to spread the religion of Islam and they tried to convey the message of the Prophet to others. So we have to continue this. You know, Muslims are not, there's like about like 7 billion people in this world. Muslims are not 7 billion people. We're like 1.5 billion something. So, it is our duty to and invite the majority of the humanity who are disbelievers. You know, invite them to Islam. And uh, we just have to convey the message to them. And after that, they have their entire life to decide, you know. And uh, whoever Allah guides not can misguide them. So, we have to just give them the information. And after that, they have their entire life to decide. But we have to convey the message. It's our duty. You know, there's no more prophet coming after the prophet Muhammad. Allah already sent 124,000 prophets and messengers. And we're the best of the ummah. So it's our duty to now to convey the message of uh, our last prophet and uh, what Allah subhanahu wa has sent. You know, even in the Quran, Allah says, you know, we speak to the disbelievers with fair preaching and wisdom. And the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, convey even a single sentence and even there are hadiths where Prophet said, you know, for Allah to guide one person through you is better for you than having everything of this world. And uh, there are also hadiths which says like to spend one morning or evening in the cause of Allah is better for you than having everything of this world. So all I'm saying, you know, we Muslims should uh, do our job, you know, it's our duty to convey the message to disbelievers as well. You know, just like we have to tell Muslims to practice Islam, uh, which is Islam. And which is repairing, and we have to do dawah, uh, which is to invite the disbelievers to Islam. We have to do both of them. We cannot, you know, underestimate any one of them. They both are equally very important parts of Islam. Yes, these are parts of Islam. And if somebody tells you it's not part of Islam, tell them to give you a reference from Quran and Sunnah. They won't be able to. Okay, and I know the Quran says, you know, there is no compulsion about religion. It is basically we do not have to kill somebody if they don't want to convert to Islam. You know, we're not allowed to kill anyone or we're not allowed to harm anybody if they do not want to come to Islam. You know, we do not we cannot convert anybody with force. Islam is a religion of peace, mercy and forgiveness, you know. And it's also a submission to Allah. We can invite them, we can with fair preaching and wisdom. And if whoever Allah guides no one can misguide them and whoever Allah allows to go to one can guide them. So this is our duty now. You know, there, there will be no more prophets after Prophet Muhammad. He was the Katamun Nabi, last prophet, field of prophets. We were the best of the Ummah. We have to continue this duty now. You know. There's like 7 billion people in this world. 1.5 billion are Muslim and like 5.5 billion are disbelievers. So we have to invite them with their preaching and wisdom. And if they come to Islam, that's Alhamdulillah. If they don't come to Islam, it's still Alhamdulillah. It's, 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 we will get our Hasanah, reward, Sawab, and the blessings from Allah. You know? 
we just give them the message and then they, they have their whole life to decide and if Allah guides them they will become Muslims Allah don't guide them they will not become Muslims but we have to do our job this is our duty once we deliver the message you know if we are getting our hasana we are we're getting our sawab you know we are getting our reward from Allah SWT and we expect to be rewarded in the year after with the Jannah you know so we can earn the rewards that the prophets earned and that they earn many rewards and hasana and so on with doing the outreach believers we have this opportunity we can do the same thing but don't be disappointed even in the time of prophet Nuh alayhi salam you know he did dawah for many many years and only 40 people came to islam and then allah destroyed you know those people who they rejected him but anyway it's it's our job at least to convey the message and whether they come or not is between them and allah we cannot force them is between them and Allah whether they want to join Islam or not whether they want to become Muslim or not is between them and Allah would we have to invite them tell them about it and expect our reward sawab hasana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will be with you Allah is with every believer if they're you know doing the right things and if they're following the commands of our prophet and what the Quran says you know okay assalamu alaikum and brother, uh, I'm going to refer to my website. It's called uh, com. I'm going to give the reference below, so please check them. It's www.zakatdawahbillionfreequr'an.com. You can support our cause. We're trying to spread Islam. And we also distribute free Quran and Islamic brochures, materials, books to uh, people in the streets so please support the cause of Allah this is the cause of Allah you can even donate your zakat for this cause because one of the uh, place where you can give your zakat your donation it could be given for uh, the cause of Allah so uh, if you donate your zakat or any money for this cause of Allah you're fulfilling your uh, obligation for giving the zakat plus you're also fulfilling your duty you know to support in the cause of Allah to spread the deen of Allah so you, you will be you will double reward you will get, get your sawab hasana for giving your zakat and you will also get your sawab reward for you know paying for the, the cause of Allah to spread the religion of Allah so you will get rewards for both of them but anyway if you do not want to give zakat for this cause uh, at least donate for this support this join us volunteer with us you know so I would request, you know, please join us, volunteer with us if you cannot, at least support, donate something, and if you cannot, then at least please make dua for us and tell others and share this message with every human being you know. Tell the non-Muslims about my website is www.zakatdawabilingfreequran.com, and you can also tell other Muslims to you know about this website and support our cause and share it with others. You know, I'm requesting all Muslims to you know join and be become united and uh, uh, love one another. You know, and uh, be you know try to unite the ummah. That should be our duty to unite the ummah, not dividing the ummah. Every Muslim, every human being who believes there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the last prophet, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a Muslim. Okay. But if, whoever rejects that one, then they're not a Muslim. So we have to tell them about Islam and you know leave it between it's between them and Allah to come back to or not. Okay, thank you so much, brother, for listening and please share this. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allah Akbar
Umar bin Khattab knew what was most worthy and most valuable. And he wanted to give the Sahaba a lesson. So they were sitting in a room. And he said, Tamannaw, make a wish. One of the Sahaba said, I wish that this room would be filled with gold. So I can spend it in the path of Allah. He said, Tamannaw, make a wish. Another Sahabi, I said, I wish this room would be filled with jewels and gems so I can spend it in the path of Allah. He said, make a wish. They said, oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, we don't know what to say. And fill this room with what? Amal bin Khattab said, my wish is that Allah Azza wa Jal fills, fills this room with the likes of Abu Ubaidah Amr ibn al-Jarrah so that I can send them in Sabir Allah. I wish this room is full of men like Abu Ubaidah. And another narration, Abu Ubaidah and Mu'adh bin Jabal. So that I can send them in the path of Allah. Umar is telling us and telling them that your human resources are more important than your financial resources. They're more important than your bricks and mortar. They're more important than everything that you have. It is your human resources that count. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he passed away, he didn't leave behind any glamorous buildings. The Masjid of Medina was mud, and the floor was sand, and the roof was palm leaves, and it would drip, rain on, would, would drip water on them when it rained. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did not pave any roads. He did not establish a financial network of business. All what Rasulullah he didn't leave behind books. All what Rasulullah left behind was Quran, and he left it behind not in Mus'haf, not in books, but he left it behind ingrained in the hearts of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. That was the product that Rasulullah left behind. That was the effort of the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He left behind the Sahaba. And every blessing that we enjoy today is a result of that. The religion didn't spread, spread, spread much in the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It spread in the time of Abu Bakr and Umar. It spread in the time of Khilaf of Banu Umayyah and Banu Abbas. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his, the Sahaba that he trained in Medina or in Mecca were not many, a hundred, a hundred plus. These were the ones who started off with him in Mecca. But every one of these men, you could just throw them anywhere in the world and leave them. Leave them alone. They'll take care of their religion. Amr bin Khattab is saying, I want such men like Abu Ubaidah and Mu'adh bin Jabal so that I can send them out. Fi sabirillah. So tarbiyah is the most important thing. It's more important than your buildings, the most important, your institutions, the most important thing is the tarbiyah. And that is how Islam will carry on. Aoujou bila mina shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Assalamu alaikum dear brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm just going to discuss uh, the importance of dawa in Islam. I'm just going to take a look at my notes. Uh, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala says, uh, "Invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and fair preaching, and argue with them in a way that is better." Truly your Lord knows best who has gone astray from his path and he is the best aware of those who are guided. This is Quran uh, Surah Nahal uh, 125. <clears throat> it's basically the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us Muslims to uh, do dawah and invite the non-Muslims uh, towards Islam. 
and uh, the reward for it is, is this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, ta'ala is telling us that uh, people who invite uh, people towards Islam these are the people who are guided and in Islam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we are guided it means we are successful and that means uh, Allah is promising us in a way paradise you know Allah is you know if you invite people uh, to the religion of Allah it's basically Allah is telling you that you're guided then you're successful and then you inshallah Allah will grant you Jannah paradise excuse me yes and also um, uh, let there arise out of you a group of people inviting to all that is good and enjoying al uh, maruf Islamic monotheism and all that Islam orders want to do and forbidding al munkar polytheism and disbelief and all that Islam has forbidden and it is they who are successful yeah, over here Allah says also you're successful if you invite people towards Islam you're successful again if Allah tells you you're guided and Allah tells you you're successful that means you're going to Jannah you're going to paradise and uh, this is what Allah is commanding us Muslims to invite non-disbelievers towards Islam And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, <clears throat> Verily those who conceal the clear proofs, evidences, and the guidance uh, which we have uh, sent down after we have made it clear for the people in the book, they are the ones cursed by Allah and cursed by the cursors. Quran Al-Baqarah 159 And about the previous, uh, I forgot to give the reference, you know. And it is they who are successful. That is the Quran, uh, Al Imran 104. And also, uh, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, peace be upon him, uh, he has stated, you know, whoever hides knowledge, Allah will uh, brand him with branding, with the branding iron from hellfire. This is from Ahmed. And Allah subhanahu wa taala says. Uh, you know who is better in his speech than who says my lord is allah believes in his oneness and then stands straight acts upon his order and invites men to allah islamic monotheism and does righteous deeds and says i am one of the muslims quran uh 33 And our Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our Prophet uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, peace be upon him, said, "Whoever guides another to a good deed will get a similar reward to the one who performs it." Sahih Muslim. Also, uh, by Allah, if Allah were to guide one man through you, it is better for you than the best type of camels. Bukhari Muslim. So if uh, our Prophet is telling us, you know, it's for Allah to guide someone through you is better for you than having the best of the camel. It's basically, you know, it's better than winning the best the lottery in the world. You know, it's it's better than having anything in this world. You know, it's better than having the wealth, all the wealth of this world, because in Akira, in Jannah, you know, what we can get, that is, uh, you know, if you compare the wealth of this world, you know, that is the, this world is nothing compared with uh, what we get in Jannah, and. Uh, and uh, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said, you know, it's like a command of the Prophet, you know, like convey, convey even a single sentence, you know, convey even a single sentence. This is the so Allah has commanded us to, you know, uh, talk to the disbelievers with fair preaching and wisdom. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has commanded commanded us to convey even a single sentence. So this is the importance of dawah. So. To say, you know, we cannot do da'wah to non-Muslims, yeah, this is not true. And everybody knows about the five pillars of Islam, right? Like there is only one God and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, is the prophet of God. We know that. Okay, everybody knows about the five pillars of Islam. That we pray five times a day. We give zakat, which is a percentage of our income. We have to, must have to go to turn to the poor. We have to do, perform a hajj once in a lifetime. We fast in the month of Ramadan for the sake of Allah, to discipline ourselves and to, you know, other poor people, they cannot eat and all those stuff, you know. So, 
there are many things you know we, we all Muslims know something about Islam you know so whatever we know we must even convey a sentence as our prophet has commanded us just taking a quick look at my notes Sorry that I'm reading something. Like I said already, you know, Prophet Muhammad said, convey you in a single sentence. Allah says, invite them with fair preaching and wisdom in Quran. So, Dawah is an obligation for the Ummah. It was obligation for 124,000, all the Prophets, you know, and Allah will not send any more prophets, so it's our duty to continue conveying the message and do what our prophet did and not follow others' opinions against dawah to non-Muslims, which has no evidence from Quran and Sunnah and it contradicts the Quran and Sunnah. So I repeat, you know, uh, Prophet Muhammad said, you know, convey in a single sentence, Allah says, invite them with fair preaching and wisdom in the Quran. So, Dawah is an obligation for the Ummah. It was obligation for 124,000 prophets and messengers. All the prophets, you know, it was obligation for all the prophets, and Allah will not send any more prophets. And Hazrat Muhammad, وسلم, Prophet Muhammad, was the last and final prophet. There's no other prophet coming after him. Allah will not send any more prophets. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last prophet. So it's our duty to continue conveying the message and do what our prophet did and not follow others' opinions against Dawah to non-Muslims, which contradicts Quran and Sunnah, which has no evidence from Quran and Sunnah, which is basically human opinion, man-made opinion. And Islam is not what humans' opinion is. Islam is not a man-made religion. It's based on Quran and Sunnah only. So may Allah unite and guide the Ummah and make us one. Amin. Thank you for watching and I'm going to uh, provide more information and some links below. So please read the information below and please uh, click on the links below. And if you would like to volunteer, please uh, you can also volunteer with us. We are known as Grassroots Dawa NYC. And we are part of Muslims Giving Back, Grassroots Dawa NYC. We have a website, it's www dawa.nyc I'm going to uh, mention all the information and links uh, below inshallah please uh, read them and click the links also as well thank you so much and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh zazakallahu khair a'udhu billahi minna shaitan wa rajim bismillahi rahmani rahim assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu islam is a religion of peace mercy kindness forgiveness sincerity and submission to allah prophet muhammad peace be upon him said if allah guides a person through you it is better for you than all that is on earth bukhari number 2783 and muslim number 2406 Convey my teachings to the people, even if it were a single sentence. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 4, Hadith 663, sorry, 667, Hadith 667. Let there be a group of people amongst you inviting to all that is good, enjoy, enjoying Al Maruf, Islamic example, exa Islamic monotheism, and all that Islam orders want to do, and forbidding Al Munkar, polytheism, and disbelief, and all that Islam has forbidden. And it is they who are successful. Al Quran, Surah Al Imran. 3 verse 104 our job is to only convey the message and only Allah can convert them after giving the message they have their whole life to decide but our Prophet said convey even a single sentence the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said 
to spend one morning or evening in the cause of Allah is better than the world and whatever is in it. Bukhari Part 2 First it was part 1, this is part 2. Another method to bring the Muslims to join us to do dawah to non-Muslims like we do, like our Prophet and the Sahabas did dawah to non-Muslims. We have to tell the Muslims the difference between dawah and islah. But both are equally important. We have to tell them the rewards of dawah and how to do dawah. Muslims should trust other Muslims and be united. Muslims should fear Allah, not worry if the disbelievers don't like dawah to them. Allah commanded us to speak to the disbelievers with fair preachings and wisdom in the Quran. Our Prophet said convey even a single sentence. We have to remind the Muslims how all the Prophets and the Sahabas lived, the, for, lived for spreading the religion of Allah. So Muslims need to wake up. Islam is very important, but that doesn't, it does not eliminate dawah to disbelievers. The world has 7 billion people, Muslims are 1.5 billion, so 5.5 billion are not Muslims. So Islam is, so Islam, sorry, hold on, so Islam is good but not enough. We need to go back. To our Rasul, Rasul's way, we need to go back to our Rasul's way and invite the disbelievers. I wish I could give a khutbah on Fridays about the necessity of Dawa and Islah altogether. Unfortunately, our Imams and mosques totally ignore this topic. We need to go to the mosques and remind them about the importance of Dawa. But most of them don't care much about it. <coughs> In America, we have like 2% Muslims and 98% disbelievers. This is an opportunity and blessings of Allah that Alhamdulillah, we are here because Allah chose us to be here. We all love Allah, so we tell other Muslims to pray, fast, etc. for the sake of Allah. Nothing happens without the permission of Allah. Allah has blessed us so we are here with 98% non-Muslims. So this is our chance opportunity to do what our Prophet did, the early Muslims, Sahabas, all the Prophets of Allah did and they invited the disbelievers. To Islam and we are Muslims so so let's tell others about Islam so we can earn the rewards of dawah just like the early Muslims earned it for the sake of Allah how can a Muslim love Allah how sorry hold on how can a, how, I'm just going back to read that again just like the early Muslims earned it for the sake of Allah. How can a Muslim love Allah but are silenced when others have so much misunderstanding about the deen of Allah? If we truly love Allah, we, if we truly love our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, we should prove it to Allah by following the instructions in of the Quran and Sunnah which is to speak to the disbelievers with fair preachings and wisdom and our Prophet commanded us to convey even a single sentence and Allah is all known Allah 
knows the best. We distribute we distribute free Islamic brochures, books, and Quran in the streets. When Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was spreading Islam, the disbelievers tried to silence him. So we should follow the Quran and our Prophet and we should not follow those who are against Dawah. Please visit our Islamic website, donate, volunteer, share with friends, family, Facebook, Twitter and others. www zakat dawah billion free quran dot com www dot z a k a t zakat d a w a h dawah b i l l i o n billion f r e e free q u r a n quran dot c o m dot com we should give this khutbah in the mosques every Friday and also after Taraweeh, explaining briefly about the rewards of Dawah and how to do Dawah easily. I'm only sharing my idea for the sake of Allah. I hope it will help in spreading the true message of spreading this religion of Allah. And Allah knows the best. Sincerely, Faisal Fahim. Adai of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallahu khair for watching this.